Good morning. Hey, how are the princes going to react to the words of Baruch? Let's look today. We're in our readings at Jeremiah 36, verses 16 to 19. Jeremiah has been presenting in the temple. He's been canceled. Now Baruch's doing it for him. And now Baruch's been granted an audience. Let's see what happens. Verse 16. Now it happened when they heard all these words that they looked in fear from one to another and said to Baruch, We will surely tell the king of all these words. And they asked Baruch, saying, Tell us, how did you write all these words? At his instruction? So Baruch answered them, He proclaimed with his mouth all these words to me, and I wrote them with ink in the book. Then the princes said to Baruch, Go and hide you and Jeremiah, and let no one know where you are. So Baruch repeats faithfully the message given him by Jeremiah, and the response of the princes is great fear. They're very concerned. The people must repent. Tremendous doom is right on the horizon. Now, these people work directly with the king, and so they know his disposition, and they know that he's very unlikely to appreciate this message. He's likely to hate it and react with, with great hostility. But they have to get the message to him. They determine they will. They're sure that questions will be asked about the material, so they verify again exactly how it happened. And most tellingly of all, they tell Baruch, go and you get Jeremiah and you guys go and hide. Don't even let us know where you are. We don't want to know. Go and hide. We're going to share this with the king. They correctly guess that the king is going to hear these messages and be furious. They expect the king to try to suppress and censor these messages. So they want them away in a safe place. So now this whole vignette is really quite revealing. There's some difference between where the king's at and where some of these princes are. They're very concerned of harm or even death for God's servants. So they tell them to get out of the way for a while. But they are going to make sure this message goes. In the kingdom of Judah now, there are two groups at least. There's a group that's, ha ha, we don't believe in this. And there's another group that's very concerned and thinks, well, maybe there's something to this. As they look out on the horizon, they see, they see trouble on every side, closing in very quickly on the nation. They're concerned that maybe these messages are authentic and they are from God, and that would mean that we need to take a totally different course of action as a nation. If Baruch or Jeremiah is harmed, God might be even more unhappy, so they don't want that to happen. So here's an interesting bit here. These rulers are trapped between God, apparently, and a very off-the-program king, and that's a tough deal for some people. Sometimes you and I will perhaps find ourselves in a case where we have a difficult things to decide. We want to influence things for the right. We're not in the position of the strongest influence, but we have to do the right thing. Uh, the devil will tempt us with an issue there about, well, how are we going to use our influence? And we might be tempted to go too far in one direction or too far in the other. Pray for those in authority, an authority in the church, an authority in the nations, because they're not all thinking the same thing. Some are in different places. And there are some, no doubt, here and there, trying to serve God, the Lord God of heaven and earth, and they're trying to use their influence in a wise way. They're not trying to be cowards, but there's a temptation to cowardice that we all might face. Pray for your leaders that they'll be courageous and also wise and know exactly how far uh, to go. You know the way this will be argued. We have our commitments to God on the one hand and to nation or king or to group on the other. And you know, for the common good, maybe we should do X instead of Y. That'll be the way it'll be argued. But it's always important to put God first. He's the Lord of the universe. God's trying to help his people. And we need to make sure that the way is open for them to receive his help. Pray that your leaders will use their influence for good. It's going to be very difficult for those outside of the skin of the leaders to know what they're thinking. But we can certainly pray for the different leaders. Let's pray even right now. Dear Father in heaven, we pray for the leaders, especially, first of all, Lord, the leaders in your church. Uh, guide them. Be their helper, Lord. Help them to be, uh, first of all, understanding. Help them to be uh, spiritually uh, lighted by your spirit. Lord, we pray that they'll have courage to be courageous. We pray that they'll have wisdom to know what to decide and that they'll be bold and wise at the same time. Lord, help us all to avoid the risks of cowardice in your service. Help us to be like these princes who are making a way of safety for God's servants and trying to deliver this message to the king. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, these are interesting times, and they're about to get even more interesting. So let's be faithful, let's be in the word, and when the trouble comes, we'll have a better idea what to do, and which side is the side of boldness, and which side is the side of truth, and which side is the side of cowardice. God forbid. God be with you today.